What's going on? Why did I? I didn't know I hit the live thing yet. I didn't know I hit the live, y'all. I'm sorry. I wouldn't have left y'all waiting like that. I've been over here just fumbling around and everything, trying to change the thumbnail. My bad. Uh, welcome. Lev Farmer 73 here. Matter of fact, I guess I can scoot y'all back a little bit and then I, I'll be able to see y'all's picture. There we go. So, I'm sitting on the toilet. <laughs> I ain't doing nothing though, but it's a good seat over here by the fire. I wanted to talk to y'all about a few things. In this tent, <laughs> some people was asking, hey everybody, how y'all doing? I was talking about, uh, hey everybody, how y'all doing? Last year, I was talking about living off grid in a tent. And um, everybody know my daughter, she did it for a few months. And it's, it's, it's off the chain. Let's put it like that. How y'all doing? Come on in. Come on in. I've been in this tent now. I've been living, I guess you could kind of say I've been living in it for a couple of weeks because... I stayed in it at camp for four, four and a half days. And then when we got back, I just set this up immediately and then took her back to South Carolina and I came back. So I've been living out here and I kid you not, it's been raining for about, I lost count two or three days how you doing solo how you doing miss native cherokee uh what's going on omar if y'all wondering why i'm moving in a tent is because i'm about to sell the rv and i'm moving everything out of the rv so i'm trying as you can see around me i'm really literally packing it in the best i can to the best of my ability and it's, what, February the 12th, and it's still cold out here. How you doing, my Renaissance grandma? How you doing, Janelle? It's a trip. How you doing, Annette? Washing clothes. I've done that, though, but it was just on the RV. Just, that wasn't too much different. How you doing, uh, Sylvia? How you doing? The Educated Natural. Congratulations, Educated Natural. Congratulations, my sister, on your 2,000. Congratulations. She just crossed the 2,000 uh, subscriber mark. Hey, Annette Marie, how you doing? So, this is the trip. I just wanted everybody to know. What's up, M4 Barbecue? J3GS Farm, what's going on? This is a stone-cold trip. Um... Miss Native Cherokee said, wow, truly going off grid intense. Uh, you know what? Uh, no, no, thank you, Educated Natural, just for, for, your, um, for your knowledge, sister. The community needs it. They need you. This should be played at high volume only in residential areas. This right here, son... This will kind of drive you crazy. And I, I want to talk about that. It's a difference between living in a tent for two weeks. So far, this ain't going to end no time soon. So this this is my permanent rest. I don't even go in the RV. The only reason I go in the RV is to get stuff out of it. Would you recommend that particular tent? Yes, I would. Say, so, Led, I bought a pop-up small tent. Want the large one. Okay. I would suggest this tent because of the space. You don't, I don't got this much space on the RV. At all. At all. The only difference between the RV and this. This, the RV, the RV holds heat about like this. It, it does not hold heat. 
and air conditioning, same thing. The walls are paper thin on the RV. So this I'm seeing holds about the same amount of heat. And I know from being in it in the summertime when I got the air conditioning running, same deal. Hey, Rio's Family Garden, how you doing? Um, I like this tent because of the space. It's so, it's so spacious. I hate to set this up. Family, I'm going to tell you this. I, as much as I like this tent, I'm going to be honest with you. Do not buy this tent if you're buying it for weekend trips. That ain't what this is for at all. <laughs> at all. It's a monster to set up. But I'm going to release a video tomorrow to show you how easy I set this part up by myself. I had to make, I, I forget the instructions, forget the way they told us to do it. I couldn't do it. it, it just, it's just too freaking hard. Y'all Y'all saw me do it live last year. I found an easy way to set this tent up by yourself. By yourself and fast. Um. So you need you need about two or three many people have set that bad boy up right. I I'm gonna release a video tomorrow and show you how to set this because a lot of people are going out and buying this tent. I'm gonna show you how to do this the easy way. Even the dude at the company that that got the video from the company, you should see the the, the crazy tricks he doing. And I want to reach out to him and show him this way that I set it up. Because I set it up like that. So, uh, hey, Odom's Homestead. How you doing, brother? Uh, is that bigger than the last one you had that was pretty big, too? Oh, you talking about the uh, White Duck Vivor tent. You know, they have about the same amount of room. They're just configured differently. Like the, the side walls of this tent. I can walk all the way to the edge in this tent. You can't do that in those bell tent. And the bell tent got that big pole in the middle. It, it's nothing wrong with it. It's just it does get in the way. So this does come with a pole if you need it. But that's for snow. And I don't have that problem or situation Let's put it like that. Not a problem. Let me bring y'all over here. Because my wood stove getting hot. I'm trying to burn my wood stove as hot as I possibly can. Because it's been raining for three solid days with no stops. Period. It has not stopped for three days. The only This tent is totally waterproof. No water came through these walls. No water came through this roof at all. But what I did notice was condensation. The only time condensation happened was when I cut the heat off. Because I like, look, I like to get in my bed and just cover up. That's about five or six different covers and blankets under there. So. I don't like wasting, and we're going to talk about that too. I don't like wasting my my um, heat, my fuel, my water. Everything has to work hand to hand. And I'm just telling y'all this. Number one, I ain't got nothing better to do. Number two, because it's raining out. Uh, how you doing, Ringo? And number two is you might want to do this, and I want to just share my side of the story about this. How you doing? Uh, oh, I, I, I can't pronounce your name. So you're new to my channel and so far I love it. Thank you for that. Thank you. I'm just giving y'all my perspective on this being out here in this tent. I'm going to tell you. Let me see. Ms. Native Cherokee say I would rather live in my garden house than be in a regular cheap tent. I did it before. Right. I'm going to tell you what drives you crazy about this. No windows. Now, I can unzip this window because that window go out to my porch, my porch area. All the windows unzip. And you can look outside all the way around. 
all these windows unzipped. All of them. The problem is, you know, waking up and you want to look out the window, you got to unzip it to look out the window. Instead of just it being some glass there, it's just a screen. And if it's hot or if it's cold outside, get this. It's just screen. It's no window, no plastic. So if it's cold outside and you open that window, it's just a screen. You're going to let all your heat out. And in here, you don't want to do that. I'm burning my stove even though it's uh it's 73 degrees outside. Ooh, okay. It's 73 degrees outside. This is outside temperature here. This is inside. Uh let me see. Question is that the Kodiak 10 by 10? No, this is the Kodiak 12 by 12. So you always be doing it, Led. I've been begging my husband to just go outside and camp like you do. So far, not yet. We're getting Rios. We're getting. We're getting. We gonna get him to come outside and play. Uh, hey, Led, I bought the small wood stove in case. All right, good. Now you ready. Use it, please. Practice with it. And you're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna learn a lot. Now, here's another reason I was burning my wood stove. Even though the whole, the whole tent is waterproof. You don't got to do anything. You don't got to spray nothing, nothing. It's cotton fiber. It's uh, poly cotton. And no water comes through. Here's the problem. Did you buy the package deal? No, I didn't. I already had the stove. And I just bought the tent and the, and the porch. What's up, Broke Farmer? What's going on, brother? I got to tell y'all this. I hate putting up that stupid porch, but it makes this tent pop. It makes this tent pop. I'm telling you that. It not only gives you double the space, but that's where you want to go and hang out, chills. It's like a real... Spit that out, boy. It can either be... Like a porch, a patio, because it's all screened. Or it can be another part where somebody can sleep just like this. Only difference is it doesn't have a floor out there. I'm burning this, this hot so it can eat up all this condensation. Because even though this tent wasn't leaking, the floor was wet. It had like moisture. See that? Nothing now. Because I cut this heater on. Matter of fact, I don't even got no shoes on. Because it's not wet anymore. You got to you gotta burn the condensation out of your tent. Out of this material. If it's raining outside, don't let... I know it's hot. If it's hot, crack a window like I got here and turn on the heat. So you can regulate your temperature. But you got to burn... You, I, ain't, I ain't talking about... Um, no electric heater, nothing like that. Something something with fire on it to really burn that doggone condensation off. Hey, Dave Busby, how you doing? Now, I got one more for you. Let me scoot over here a little bit. Being out here, one thing I've learned is do not move until you plan when i say don't move don't even get out of bed until you plan how you about to do it i'm not even joking i'm not exaggerating anything what i mean by that is when i get out of this bed it's an air bed it's close to the ground i gotta go pee when you get up you got to go pee. You better make sure you got about four or five different other things you're going to do before you get back in bed, if you're getting back in bed. If you're going to get up and go pee, you might as well go over here, get your coffee running. If it's that early in the morning, uh, make sure ain't no leaks and water around. Everything you do got to be a multitask. How many people saw my washing machine video yesterday, me washing my clothes? 
Let me cut this other light on. How many people saw me? Uh, hey, buy you, buy you sugar. How you doing? Everything I did, I was cooking. I was heating up the tent. I was heating up the tent with a kerosene heater. I was cooking on top of the kerosene heater. The heat from the kerosene heater was also helping dry my clothes. I had the fans plugged to the generator. The generator had the solar panels hooked up, sucking up a little solar power from this cloudy, rainy sky. If y'all would have seen this contraption, it was like a... When I was a kid, I don't think they got those no more. When I was a kid, they had them... Uh, People used to get gerbils. Remember people used to just go to the pet store and buy gerbils? I don't know if you can even still do that. And with them little gerbils, they look like mice if you don't know what a gerbil is. Or, or a guinea pig. They used to use it for gerbils though. And they hook all of them doggone tubes together. And some people will have a whole room full of these tubes so the, the gerbil can run through trails. Right? Anybody ever seen that? Maybe I'm just, I'm that old I guess. They had these tubes, you hook them together, just a bunch of tubes. You could hook them together like racetracks any way you wanted to, just so um, they could have something to do. But it was all, you got this when it goes through this tube, but it does that when it goes through that way. It does this. That's how I had this whole thing hooked up like a doggone gerbil, a gerbil trail. Everything had a purpose. Now I'm oh Dave Busby say I remember those right right they I I've never had one but I all my friends had gerbils and and mice and guinea pigs I ain't never even want none of them they smelt funny to me so uh that brings me to another subject and I'm going I'm going to talk on it and then I'm gonna turn it loose everything need to be multitasked and everything need to be at a bare minimum how many people how many people is talking about moving off grid you've thought about it um you're playing with the idea you're saving money for i need to know how many people uh are even thinking about it how many people have done it thinking about it about to do it maybe this summer this spring you saving up the money because you're about to do it hey mel's garden i want to ask that because i want to i want to kick some reality real quick okay rio's family garden say for sure thinking about it okay everybody thinking about it thought about it yep hand <laughs> brenda uh dmv gardener says me blessed hey males garden okay me too jaybird 357 keep them coming look that that light died <sighs> Want my own Harriet Claire blessings to you. Hey, uh, one virtuous woman, how you doing? Doing it. Who said doing it? Okay, Omar L. Tammy said me. Say I remember the gerbils, Annette Marie. Okay, Gina versus Gina, how you doing, my sister? Listen, this is the reason why I'm asking this question. Say we've done it 5.39 acres. Okay. If you've done it and you're doing it already. I ain't, I'm not talking to you because you already know. Bunch of people thinking about it, dreaming about it. Uh, Mills Garden said, Leah, thanks, just got 2.75 acres. Okay, okay. This is the reason I'm, I'm saying it. If you're trying to do it like us and not have a house built on it immediately, if, if you have no infrastructure whatsoever, And you're trying to save money. You're trying to save. I don't know. I don't even know another way to say it. All I can say is this. If you are not a minimalist. And you don't know how to do the bare minimum. I'm about to tell you the dark, deep parts of this. What I've experienced so far living here. I've never lived on raw land before. Never. Never. I've had land before and it had a house on it. 
I've lived in an RV before, but that's an RV. I've never lived, say, I saw your refrigerator in the same video, which fridge and freezer size do you have? This is the EcoFlow uh, Glacier. Right here behind me. Say, four acres in Arizona. Hey, Shaggy. Say, got your land, but can't do what, what you're doing. It takes a lot of strength. You know what? It don't just take a lot of strength. I mean, we can we can say strength. It takes mental capacity. Didn't I get the EcoFlow Ultra? Yes, that's at my house in South Carolina. That's controlling my whole house. I can control it from this phone right now out of town. Hey, everyday life of OCD is chick. Here's the thing. I can control everything. African dreaming in the house. I can control everything with my phone everywhere. So I think it's best to get rid of a lot of stuff, things you don't need. Exactly. Now, if you don't, if you don't have no idea, it's so hot in here. I'm, I'm sweating now. If you don't want to become a minimalist at all, and it's things that you cannot live with, this may this may put you off a little bit. I'm just telling you. Uh, Harriet Claire said, washing clothes by hand now. Okay, that, that'll throw you off. I'm not washing my clothes by hand, but just washing your clothes and hanging them on a the line is a trip by itself. It's, it's, People think it's cute. It's not cute. Hanging your clothes out on a on a laundry line to dry. Here's the here's the crazy part about that. Say it's a nice sunny hot day. You ain't worried about the rain or nothing like that. For some reason, and that's why I always try to dry my clothes indoors. For some reason, soon as you got some clean clothes on the line, birds doo-doo on your clean clothes it's it's almost like they know it's almost like you know when you first wash your car you ain't heard a bird in three weeks soon as you wash your car your car is white you come outside and every bird in america that ate mulberries aimed right at your car so every time i wash clothes in the rv and came back out here and hung I hung them up to dry and came back out. My clothes is clean. They smell in April fresh. But I got to rewash them because they got old mulberry, blackberry, bird poop all on them. And they all, some be on the collar. It ain't nowhere you can hide. It, you got bird poop on, on your back, on your, they poop on the back of your shirt. So you'll be walking in the store. And you got a big old purple and white stain. That part suck. So you can, I can wash my clothes, but it's still some stuff to think about. Water. If I could show y'all right now, collecting rainwater, it's a blessing and a curse. When I hear rain, when I hear rain, and it's going to rain in the forecast, I get into high gear. Uh, African Dreamer said, it ain't cute at all. Did for three years during rainy season. Uh, it was quite a, ta a task. Hey, man. When I know it's about to rain, I run around the land and grab every doggone bucket I can find without a hole in it. And put them in strategic places all around my land. I got about eight pickle barrels here on this land. So I'm placing the pickle barrels in a row so they can catch water. I'm putting all the five guys. I can't make this up. Look at this. Look at this. I don't know if y'all going to be able to even see this. I got, let me see. I'm, I'm going to shine some light on there for y'all. Look, oh, that made it worse, didn't it? 
Because you can't see. Okay. There were the two buckets of water that I got running off this awning. Two full buckets of water. And I got them all around the tent on the slopes. They, they go all the way down this wall and all the way down this wall. So I got about, I got about six buckets over here. I think I counted six. And I got about eight buckets over here. Because the water going to run right down, right into them with no effort. So I don't want, it's like I don't want it to rain, but I'm running out of water. And I ran through about, my washing machine takes about five gallons of water. So washing clothes, if I'm talking about, and that's, this is technology. We using technology, using water. You're about to, I ain't going to say waste per se, but yeah, you about to waste five gallons of water washing your clothes. Now, somebody asked me a question. They said, Visual preparedness in the house. What's up, man? Somebody said, Led, so if it took five gallons of water to wash your clothes, did you get another clean five gallons of water to rinse your clothes? Hell no. No. No, I did not. After it let that soapy water off, <laughs> I poured it right back in that dock, edited that whole part off. I put that water right back in there, let it spin out again, and then I hung my clothes up. And <sighs> what's up, Growing with Hudson? How you doing? Somebody said that was gross. Listen to me, family. <laughs> I can't make this up. Hold on, let me get up here. Uh, they said that's gross. And all I could think, I, ain't, I can't do that then. I thought I could get away with this, but I can't. All I could think was, if you think me not rinsing my clothes, what's up, B. Rich? Thank you. Say, what's up, people? Uh, how, far are, 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 how far out are you from getting your well? I'm not even thinking about no well now. I'm, right now, at this moment, with all the changes that I've made, I'm not even thinking about that at this moment because all my plans have changed. Everything, all our plans have changed. Um, I'm not selling my house in South Carolina because it's too much of an asset. That's a, that's a golden ticket. I'm not selling it. I'm a, I'm a long-term lease it out. That'll pay the house off. It'll pay itself off. And I don't even got to be in it. So it's going to take us a little longer to do everything. Have you seen the well pump you can drive in the ground? Yeah, them ain't as cute as you think they are. Um, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this about those well pumps that you drive in the ground. I literally have one on my trailer right now. I got the first section. I got the auger and everything. The only reason I haven't taken that stupid thing back to the store is because I lost the receipt and tractor supply. They give you a hard time if you don't got your receipt. I am not going to try to drive my own well. Not like that. How you doing, Willie Rivers? The reason why I'm not going to try to drive my own well in the ground like that is because you don't know what's under the ground. You each one of those sections that first section with the head on it, I think, what did it cost me? Like $80? That section with the head on it and the filter, that cost like $80. So I paid $80 for that thing. And if I start driving that into the ground and it break, I just buried, literally, I buried $80. Like a damn pirate. I just buried cash like a freaking pirate. Uh, can't that water be refiltered again? What water? My my laundry water? I'm not trying to. 
That's another thing we're going to talk about. I'm glad y'all coming out because y'all doing this for me. Wasting energy. Wasting energy. You can't be wasting no energy out here. That means yourself. That's why I said when you get out to bed, when you get out to bed, you better stretch, pee, poop, brush your teeth, sweep the flow. Just do everything you need to do in one whop. Don't just get up, pee, get back in the bed. You just wasted all that energy and it's still more things to do. You got to make it all work. So, well pumps, all of that stuff takes electricity. It takes power. And let me tell you, let me show y'all something. We're going to turn over here to the EcoFlow world real quick. All right. Here go my EcoFlow setup. I got the EcoFlow Delta Max 2. You can't hardly see it with all them wires because it's connected to freaking everything. I got the EcoFlow. This is my survival tactic gear. EcoFlow Delta Max 2. I got the EcoFlow Delta. And I got the... This is going out to African Dreaming. African Dreaming. Uh, I got the EcoFlow Glacier Refrigerator. Full of, keeping my food cold. And I got the EcoFlow Wave Heater slash heat pump slash air condition unit. Okay. There's a green cord going to this EcoFlow. You can't see it. It's a green cord. That's because I have a, yeah, African Dreaming, you see it. I have a green cord going to that because the sun ain't been out in three days, right? So that cord right there goes to another gas generator outside. Now stick with me here. I got the, I had it connected to the Delta, um, I mean, I'm sorry. I had it connected to the EcoFlow dual fuel generator, right? So whenever this, whenever this system goes low and I'm running at 30, it's down to 30%. The gas, the EcoFlow gas generator will cut on by itself. That will run until it fills this back up to 100% and then it cuts itself off. The only reason why I had to take that off is because it was about to rain and I don't have anything to cover my generator up because that's in South Carolina. So I, I want to show y'all, but I think it's dark outside. I got a whole nother tent about 50 feet away from this setup. Okay. And out there is... I got gas generators inside of it. It's like a giant, like garage type tent. My gas generators is out there. The cord that goes to the dual fuel smart generator from EcoFlow just ain't long enough. So I had to run this drop cord and cut on my gas generator out there and charge up all my batteries all around the building. You have to do this. If we had a needs list right now, I think I think I can just start naming stuff off. Because usually I tell people, I can't tell you what you need. I think I'm starting to get down to a bare minimal universal necessity list. I'm going to make that for us. I'm going to make it. If you're not a minimalist... If you are too clean to be dirty, if you are too clean to be dirty, what I mean by that, if you turn your nose up to pooping in a bucket, if you turn your nose up to, I ain't going to say peeing in a jar, but let me just, can I show y'all my bathroom? I'm not going to show you the, I'm not going to show you the, the Easter eggs I, I, uh, I hid inside. I'm going to show you my bathroom, okay? Here's my desk where I do stuff and study and whatnot. Here's my kitchen. Here's my powerhouse. There's my refrigerator. This is kind of my kitchen area. Here's my furnace in the basement. And my cooking station. 
here's my bedroom and my bathroom is wherever the hell I feel like it being. My bathroom is in the middle. It's like five points. It's in the middle of the the furnace, the kitchen, the, the power station, the bedroom, and the office. This is it. It just got a little seat on it because it my whole toilet doubles as a, a seat where I can just sit in front of the fire and get warm when I come in from that rain. But that's it. I use a urinal like from the hospital. There go my roll. I put that on the handle. And I'm not going to show you the Easter eggs that I, I dropped in there. Okay. Unless you're ready to win a prize. <laughs> I don't think you're ready to win that prize. Oh, look. Look, Ma. I found the Easter egg. No, <laughs> Baby, put that back. I, that's a true story, though. True story when I was a kid. Friend of mine, we had an Easter egg hunt when I was a little kid in the backyard. And one of my friends in the neighborhood, he thought it was an Easter egg. <laughs> I need to call my sister and see if she remember that. It was just a big old piece of white dog poop. about that shit Tim, just now oh lord <laughs> oh, my mama said no baby <laughs> no baby put that back <laughs> that ain't no egg baby <laughs> oh my god I'm sorry y'all I'm sorry my friend picked up a big chunk of old white malnutrition white dog poop. I don't know if you've ever seen a white dog turd. And, you know, they didn't used to have little dogs in my neighborhood when I was a kid. They used to have, everybody had like Great Danes and, and, and uh, uh, German Shepherds and stuff. You know, big old malnutrition white dog poop. He thought it was an egg. <laughs> Think about it because... Boy, they extinct. You know, I, I didn't blame him. I was just, I was put it like this. I did not win the Easter egg hunt because after that, I was like, yuck. <laughs> I'm not touching anything. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, y'all. But, <laughs> oh, my God. So, if you're not ready, if you are not ready and prepared to do this, it's nothing wrong with having technology out here. I, I, we ain't even going to play that game, okay? But it's certain things you cannot get away from. It's certain things you can't get away from. Um, the darkness, for instance. It's so dark out here. Right? Uh, who said that? Who, uh, Kizzy say practicing in the city. Okay, Kizzy. It's, it's so... When you do it... <clears throat> you know what's crazy? And I hate to say this. Because I don't know another way. And it might just be me. Is start becoming fun. Like I said in another video. It's like putting together a puzzle. And you start finding all the pieces. Have you ever put together a puzzle? Have you ever put together a puzzle? And at first when you first dump the puzzle on the table. It's just a bunch of jumbled up mess. First thing you do right. Is flip over all your pieces. For it. Y'all know how to do puzzles. You flip over uh, pieces of April flip over all your pieces so you can see what the picture or the color on the piece the next thing what you do put all the same shape pieces in piles over and you know away from each other once you start doing that you start seeing which ones are the edges right which ones are the edges <clears throat> 
then you start filling in the middle. Once you start filling in the middle of that puzzle, you start to see the picture that it's going to give you. Then it becomes easier and easier. You're like, oh, this is a this is a puppy dog with a, a bow on. Okay. And you start getting all the pieces, the, the pink pieces to the bow. You know where them is all at. You start seeing the puppy furry, putting that together. It becomes easier because you're putting the picture together. It's all making sense now. Everything start making sense like, okay. When you first started that puzzle, you don't know which piece to grab first. You just stumbling around in the dark. But once you get everything organized how you need it to be and start putting one piece at a time, you start seeing the picture and it all come it, it all come together. Then you you putting a puzzle like this. Once you start putting a puzzle like this, putting it together like this, your only thought is it ain't no more putting the puzzle together. It's now your only thoughts is when I'm done with this puzzle, am I going to glue it together and make it into a wall picture? Am I going to just take it back apart, put it back in a box? You start thinking about what's your next move. How are you going to solidify this? How are you going to finish this? Because the puzzle in your brain is already done. That is living off grid to me. When you first get your land, is you you notice the beauty you notice all of that but then you start the reality kick in right what are you gonna do where are you gonna set up your house where are you gonna set your tent where are you gonna set your camper where are you gonna set your trailer where are you gonna set where's you gonna put the bathroom are you gonna have it outside that don't last long i'm not going out there to do to relieve myself like ever ever because something out here sounds like a lady screaming all the time i don't even some people say oh that's just a coyote that's just a fox that's just a bear i frankly don't give a damn i don't want to know i don't want to know who or what it is out there squealing like that a hog i don't care just stay out there so that's why my bathroom <laughs> is right here by my bedroom. Not going out there. Um, If you moving off grid and you do not believe in, if you're not a, if you're not one to carry a sidearm, if you don't believe in carrying sidearms, um, good luck with that. Good luck with that. I have so many sidearms all around me at all times. I even have them out in places I can't. I'm not going to tell you. Just in case I'm making a run for it and mine fall off, I know another place where I got one stashed away. I'm not coming out here like that with the stuff that I've heard, the things that I've seen, the things that my daughter and her fiance have told me and seen and heard. One night they came over here and was like, did you hear that last night? I said, I thought that was y'all. They said, no, <laughs> no. I'm telling them, I was wondering what y'all was doing out on the, on my side of the land and why was y'all making so much noise and why was she screaming for no reason? I always, look, I, I thought it was my daughter so much out there howling, I wanted to yell out the windows, and, hey, y'all, shut up out there. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do it. So they was like, we wasn't even around you. So that just tells you something. Everything need to be compartmentalized. And I'm going to say this. Oh, this is my best part. Oh, this is my best part. I, I, I want to show you better than I can tell you. Let's turn this direction.
my kitchen. Okay, this is one of the most important things to me. Now, I'm just sharing my journey with y'all. I ain't telling you what to do, okay? And with that, I'm going to say this. Functionality is way more important than beauty. You can have both if you want to. It, Having both takes money, it takes energy, it takes space. Functionality is way more important than beauty. My, my little setup looks to the average eye like pure crap. You would think this is a nightmare. Ain't no way you could live in here, right? No way you can function. But I'm telling you, the way I got it set up is for the way I function, the way I do things. I wanted all my kitchen stuff right here. I wanted my refrigerator right next to the kitchen stuff because that's where I'm going to be getting my food from. I wanted my power station close to the door so I can run it out. But I wanted to be able to run all of my equipment. I wanted my heating sources over on this corner so if it does catch fire i can damn near kick it out this door and cut a hole in the back look at this why why do i sleep back here why did i put my bed back here i keep a knife i keep a knife by my bed i don't keep a knife by my bed for for um for predators let me see who, what they say Say thank you for sharing your knowledge, Led. Uh, I have learned so much from you, which, which I have never had. Wish I had never found your channel. Thanks again. <laughs> thank you. I think um, I keep a knife by my bed because if there's an emergency, no, I didn't. I didn't. I haven't checked my my text yet i'm gonna i'm gonna check it kia how you doing by the way no i don't know when he did it did he do it well we'll talk we'll talk i keep a knife by my bed because if i have an emergency i can cut through this canvas tent i keep it sharp if i have another emergency i can cut through the tent you know what i'm saying Uh, does Lady Led have her own tent? No, no. This we we stay in here together. Let me. That's perfect. I'm glad you brought that up. Why does it look like I have this set up like a bachelor pad? Perfect. I know because you see this little little twin bed, right? Part of that ain't none of y'all business. But really, I have two of those. This. Let me show you something. I told you, functionality is better than beauty. When Lady Leg comes here, because she ain't never had to sleep in this tent for good, okay? But I have another one of these beds. When she comes, I got a fold-up desk. This little desk folds up. That table folds up and goes under this table, under this big white table. And the other twin bed fits right down this slide. I scoot this table over. And the other twin bed goes there. That's giving you a queen size bed. And I can control either side because it's an air bed. You got to think outside the box. Right now, Lady Led is handling business in South Carolina. And I have, I have work to do out here. And that's another thing. I can We can bring that up. We can talk about that. When you all when you move off grid, if you plan on doing it, if you plan on doing it like this, everybody got a everybody got a role to play. You know? Everybody has a role to play. Um she ain't just sitting on her thumbs waiting on me, and I'm not sitting on my thumbs waiting on her. She's handling business back there that I cannot be there for. 
and I'm handling business here that she can't be here for. And it's still a team. It's still a team. I don't, we are not the kind of couple <clears throat> that stay jammed up each other's crease and, and say, I love you. Oh, you're so cute. Oh, you're so cute. I, no, 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 no. Look, we over 30 years deep in this marriage. That ain't nothing wrong with the cutesy pootsy stuff, but you don't get work done. Okay? Like I keep, keep telling people, hey, sex only lasts so long. I don't care how good you is at it. Okay? And that's the problem we have today in today's world. And I'm not going to go down that alley, but I'm going to peek around the dumpster a little bit. Sex only lasts so long, I don't give a damn how good you are at it. After you're done, wash up, and it's time to put in some work. It's time to go to work. It's time to make a living, make some money, unless unless that put unless that is your job. Just saying. But y'all understand what I'm saying. Nah, she's handling all. Matter of fact, she called me today and was telling, asking me questions on what paperwork I need signed and everything else. And I told her to hold it there until I come back into town. No. Don't mail it here either. Just keep it. They can wait. I'll be there. I'll sign contracts and stuff. Don't. Don't. You think I should come there? Don't come here unless you're about to come here and be staying. We ain't that kind of. We I ain't going to say we ain't that kind of couple because I love my baby. But if you've been married, if you've been married for a period of time, you start knowing the truth of marriage is not that crap you see on television. You can't get nothing done. If you try to live your life, which a lot of people do, a lot of people try to live their life like on television, television marriages. I ain't going to lie to y'all. That's a whole handful of bullshit. This is how marriage is. If you do, if all your recreation is, is to stay in bed with your feet on the ceiling. If that's your only recreation, y'all ain't going to get shit done but babies. All you going to get done is babies. All you going to accomplish is mouths to feed. That's it. And the more mouths you got to feed, you still got to go to work to feed them. So, the way we do things, we're not always together. That's why you always see me. One, one reason, she don't want to be on camera every five seconds. But for the most part, she's somewhere handling either her business, my business, or our business. We just, we keep in contact constantly so we know what's going on. If I tell her, I call her, it stopped raining and I was able to chop all these trees down. I'm heading back to Columbia. Boom. Get ready for me. Put on something nice. It's like, I'm like a truck driver, really. I'm like a truck driver. You know, a longshoresman, if you will. A military man. You gonna be gone for a while and your wife understands my man is a beast. He out here saving lives. You can't be jammed up in the crease all day, man. Just every time you get a chance to, you know, every time you get a chance to, you understand, dive in it. Give it your old college try. Make it make it last forever. Keep sweat. Do it. Do what you're supposed to do. But you can't be just laying up on people. And that's the problem with people, man. Just laying up with each other all day. God, but y'all don't get nothing done. So that's it. Everything I have <clears throat> is raining. Still, it's getting harder. I left one thing out. And then I'm about to take some questions because we're coming up on an hour. The other reason I'm running my, my wood stove so hot, the only water that drips in all tents with that stove pipe, that stove jack, will leak a little bit. 
So it runs down this pipe, hits the hits the top, and runs down to the floor down the leg and a little bit on the floor. When you got your stove running, it steams that water off. So no more water comes in, no more condensation, no more nothing. I'm just telling y'all what I'm going through. I'm not telling you how to do it. I'm not telling you nothing. I'm not teaching you nothing. I'm just really, truly giving y'all. Oh, and as y'all can see, you can hear the rain. That that don't quit. Thank you, uh, Tonio. What's the people? How far are you from? Oh, this is your first live stream. Wait a minute. Say, this is your first live stream. Congratulations. It says it's your first live stream. Let me click on what you said. Oh, I can't. Uh, it won't let me put it up. Let me see. I can't see everything you're saying. Tonio, say what you said again. It says, what's up, people? How far are, are you from? And then I can't see it because it's saying, let's celebrate Tonio's their first super chat on live stream. Thank you for your first super chat. But can you put your comment back up so I can uh, see what you said? Because it cut you off. Uh, let me. I'm taking questions. Let me see. Say, Sunny in Phoenix. Christy says two can be, two can be together even separate. One communication. Amen to that. Real free gear said that's why my Father's Day gift was a tractor. Because my body's beat up. I'm waiting on my tractor. I can't wait to get my tractor someday. Thank you, African Dreaming. She said, said congratulations, Tonio. Uh, Adina Collins, your internet is working great, Led. African Dreaming, did you hear that? I Thank you for that. That's confirmation. Thank you, Kia, for, for thanking Tonio. Uh, let me see. Say thanks for T says thank you for sharing what you're doing though. It's a good perspective. I'm just giving you my perspective and I hope it helps you. Rio's Family Garden says you can hear that rain. It's been like that all day in South Georgia. I know. I know. Yes. For three days. Let me see. Uh Kimberly. Kimberly Godbo says, I finally made a live. Well, welcome to the live, Kimberly. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How you doing? Valerie Ben says, hey, Led, I got four 20-pound propane tanks today. Let me show you something. You got, I can't show you all of my setup because my fueling station is about 30 or 50 yards away. But I can show you this. Watch this. Y'all want to go in my kitchen? Y'all want to see the, the outdoor kitchen setup? Hold on. I'm going to get a flashlight too to make this better for y'all. Alright. Take y'all in here. First, I'm going to cut this light on. I got a little solar light bulb up here. Got a little baby solar panel on it. You will see it when I cut it on. Kind of dim. There we go. All right. Now let me cut on uh, Sunday Backyard Farmer. Always. I told you. I always keep this light on. The Sunday Backyard Farmer got me. And it's magnetic. So I'm going to clip this up here on this post. Oh, my socks is still up here. I, I stepped in some water today. They dry now. This. You said you got a 20 pound propane tank set up. Here go my water station. I want to show you all that. Well, let's show you the gas first. Shoes is drying. I got, oh, y'all can't see nothing. Here's a kerosene heater. Here's my laundry bucket that I keep all my dirty clothes in. Another seat pad. Another kerosene heater. The water jug I use for my washing machine. Everything is set up. It looked crazy, but it, everything is set the way it's supposed to be. Here's my 40 gallon, I mean my 40 pound propane tank. The 40 pound propane tank is running my buddy heater. It's running my, my little stove cooktop in there. It's running everything with propane in there. 
out here, I have an ice cold. See if y'all can see that. Where's my other flashlight? I have an ice cold. Another refrigerator, DC refrigerator. I use this for frozen stuff for my meat. That way I can just keep this on frozen and keep all my meat in there. Now, I got my cooking oil and all my hardcore cooking stuff in that bucket under there. Here's my watering station. I use these, just some old, some old jugs I got from camp to dip water out and pour them into my Berkey filter here. This is my Berkey. I pour the water into my Berkey. Then I boil it, or I boil it first, then pour it into my Berkey. And then uh, put it in my water tanks. This is my water setup. This is the jug I just ran out of water. So I'm going to be doing another process tomorrow. Uh, Y'all seen my washing machine and my Bible. That, I set this down. I was... I set that mug down. I, don't, I couldn't find my own Bible. <laughs> uh, and I got the Opus uh, Mega down there. And that's just, that's running a little bit of whatever I need at the time. That ain't really running anything. But it's, right now it's just charging my, uh, my ham radios. Then I got a little chair, which I was here reading the Bible, you know, <laughs> That's I knew I, I could not find my Bible. Like, what did I do with it? Now, look, this is what it looked like. Let me show y'all this. This is what it looked like me coming in and out constantly. I've been coming in and out, in and out, in and out. Looking for this, looking for my Bible. And it was just sitting right over here. And I kept passing it. It was sitting right here. I just kept passing it all day. All day. It's been there since I was washing my clothes yesterday. So, this is kind of it. Matter of fact, let me show you one other thing too. Put this up. Uh, this is why the porch part is the bomb. It's hard to set up. It's hard to set up the first time. But the reason I love this this whole porch section, because it's almost as big as this is 10 foot, 10 by 10 by 12. So this gives you extra space to do other stuff without going outside. So I've been walking back and forth, walking back and forth. And on a good, nice, crispy day, all these windows open. All these windows open and screen mesh. That's the front door. All of these open with awnings over top of them. So when I'm when I was out here doing my laundry, doing them videos, I was sitting here in this chair, trying to get a couple scriptures in, trying. And this is it. So I come back in. I just wanted to give y'all a little quick tour of how I be getting around and how I do it around here. But see now it look it look like a whole bigger apartment, right? This is as big. Somebody said that's bigger than my apartment. It really truly is. I have my nephew here, and he said, "Damn, unk, this is bigger than my apartment in Myrtle Beach." I said, "I know." I know. So this is it. Move my table out the way. I better get another log in here real quick, y'all. Hold on. I don't want this fire to go down yet. Still okay. We still okay. It just needed a little stoking. Mm 
Now see, now that I got that fire rolling like that, I wouldn't waste no propane. I wouldn't waste propane trying to cook or heat myself up. So you use, I use my propane to heat myself up. I use my propane to cook with. What size is the tent? It's a Kodiak 12 by 12. And I got the 10 by 12 porch section to go on to it. Um, left my glasses somewhere. Oh, I got it. Leg, can you give info on those flip light? No, I can't. I don't know. Our friend here in the greenhouse lounge, um, um, our, our uh, <clears throat> our friend here in the greenhouse lounge, Sunday backyard farmer, he gifted those to me. I don't know where he got them. I don't know anything about them. All I know is I don't, I don't do anything without them. Um, Leg, can you talk about your thought process for wood storage chopping with rain in mind? I chop all my wood and I store it up out there. I got a big awning in my fueling station where all my gasoline, my propane tanks, everything that's fuel, kerosene, propane, gasoline, is a, I got a fueling station on my land. When I chop my wood up, I put it under that awning so it can dry so every day i bring a bundle of wood in my tent so it can get ready to go in this uh wood stove that's how that's what i do uh thank you nacha kemp so you and lady led em embody wisdom that is sadly lacking in our communities thank you for being the voice of reason to help i'm learning so much shalom thank you for that nacha kemp i appreciate it i really do um, let me see. Peace and joy says I was focusing on campers, but I love the functionality of the tent. I'll keep researching. Thank you. It takes some work. Regular gun guy. What's up, brother? What's up, man? You welcome, man. You can, you can stay in that room over there. I put you in the West Wing. I get you in the West Wing. All right. I got to talk to you, too, by the way. I They said you, you hit me up. I'm going to hit you back. Let me, I'm going to check this when this video is over. I'm about to be off in a minute. Um, I'm just taking some some questions right now, and then we gon' we gonna piece us piece ourselves out. I just wanted to kind of show everybody like what I'm doing at this moment because it's doable. But I want you to think about it like a puzzle. I want you to think about this like a hard puzzle. It's gonna look like it's gonna look like you cannot do it. A thousand piece puzzle with them little pity pieces. It's going to look like you you ain't going to get done with this in no time. What do you do with a puzzle? You do a little bit today, you walk away from it. You do a little bit tomorrow, you walk away from it. Every day you put another few pieces of that puzzle together. That's what owning your land, when you purchase land, that's kind of what, that's how I'm doing it. I can't say everybody. That's how I'm doing it. It's just working out better for me, and I ain't got to come out of my pocket wasting tons of money that I do not have. Thank you, Rio's family garden. So we appreciate you, Led. Thank you. Kimberly Gobbo says, what's your channel where you teach us how to make our own solar? Um, That's Led Tech, and the reason why I... That's just too hard because people don't get it. People don't quite understand, and I can't break it down no further than that. So what I'm going to do is just do a video and you can follow it. It's just that I was trying to do it live, but that took way too long. Um, how long does fresh wood take to dry before you can use it? It depends on what kind of wood you chopped. You don't want your wood too dry and you don't want your wood too wet. If it's too dry, it'll burn like cardboard and it won't even stay on fire long. If it's too wet, all it's going to do is smoke. They even have little sensors where you can see the moisture in the wood that you're going to burn. Uh, Vision Preparedness says, Led, uh, share what is your biggest struggle off-grid? <clears throat> hey, 
Hey, TLC in the garden. Thank you, sister, for putting that up. What is my biggest struggle? I can only speak for what my biggest struggle is like right now. The only thing I can think my biggest struggle is right now is I'm a very impatient person. I am not patient. I'm not going to lie and say I am because I'm not. I want everything done and I want everything done now. I want to build my wife a house. I want my garden up and going. I want my tractor. I want everything. I want my fruit trees in the ground. I want my livestock running and set up. I want all of that. And I want my money to be right where I could just bop, 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 bop. And I can't do that. But. And I'm not patient. So it's driving me crazy. I want. I want. The best for my family. And I want the best. For this land. I really want. I, I named it Freedom Acres for a reason. And I want. I feel responsible to live up to that. And sometimes I feel like I'm letting myself down. I can tell you that. That's that's true. That's the truth. Um, some days you, you do feel like throwing in the towel. Some days you, you ask yourself, well, why am I doing this again? This ain't the first time I've done it. This is my first off grid, but I'm like, why am I doing this? You know, I think about my age. I think about how long I'll have to enjoy it. Yada, yada, yada. Sometime I feel like I'm failing. You know, because things every time I take one step forward, something pushes me two steps back. Out here on the grid, I'm supposed to be out here, number one, shooting videos, but I'm supposed to be dropping trees so I can clean up this mess because I can't get to it with these trees. And I got to do it. I got a time limit because as soon as it warm up, these leaves going to come back and I won't be able to get in these woods like I want to. So I'm on a time schedule and every time I come out and do ready to chop down trees, get stuff in order, clean up stuff, haul stuff to the dump with my trailer, blah, blah, blah. It start raining. So now I got to just throw that main mission away, turn around and now I got to get every bucket that I can find. And I can't just say, well, it's going to be raining. So I'm going back to South Carolina and just relax until it's done. Nope, can't do that. While I'm here, now I got to prepare and catch as much rainwater as I possibly can. So it's like taking those lemons. I hate this saying, but it's just the truth. Taking those lemons and turning it into lemonade. If you can't accomplish your mission, it's a billion other missions that need to be accomplished. It's just not. I got to scratch that off my planning book, like chopping down my trees I got to scratch that out and put it somewhere else. Now, re collecting rainwater that I was thinking I was going to do next month, I'm doing it right now. So, Vision, that was an excellent question, brother. My biggest struggle is with... Here's how I can sum it all up, bro. My biggest struggle is with myself. When you're out here... Well, I can only speak for me. While I'm out here, I feel like I keep letting myself down because I don't accomplish everything that... Before I go to bed at night, I write down what I want to do the next day. Everything I want to accomplish the next day. And then something happens. It starts raining. Anything. It's always something. Somebody need my help somewhere else. Or I got to go back to Columbia, South Carolina because something happened there and I got to go handle it immediately. Or It's just always something that throws you off, man. When you think everything is going smooth, one of my kids got a problem and I got to go to the rescue. It's just always something. So my biggest struggle with living off grid is really the struggle with myself 
and all the obstacles thrown in my way and things that you do not have like money. You don't have. You you think you got money. You think you have money. You think you have enough money to do everything. I'm going to tell you, you never have enough money. I don't give a damn how much money you think you got. You never have enough money, it seems, to accomplish what, what we're supposed to be accomplishing doing this. You just seem like you never got enough. Ever. Because once you accomplish one thing, then something else you like, now I need that. So now I got to save up more money to do that because that part goes with this part. So you, it's now I got to, that, that part, my struggle myself, now I got to wait. It's the waiting game for me. It's the waiting game, waiting for everything, waiting for money, waiting for um, paperwork to be signed, waiting. It's always a waiting game. Everything, you know? So that part and it's audio control. And that's the part where I left that Bible out there again, didn't I? It's that waiting game part. Look, see, this is how I did it last time. This is how I left my Bible out here last time. It's a waiting game. And it's all up to him. I have no control. I have no control over that part. And I just, you know, all you can do is pray and try to prepare for what's next. That's all you can do. You, you never know what's going to get thrown at you tomorrow. Oh, here's one. Here's one for my homesteaders. And you ain't got to live off grid for this. You will have your whole schedule set for your garden and what you're going to do. And then you come outside and maybe four of your chickens is dead. Something done got at your chickens. You, How many people had that problem? Now you got to sit here and count how many chickens is still alive. How many did got away? They just still hiding. How many you got to bury? And now you got to start thinking about now I got to incubate some more eggs or go back to tractor supply or order me some new chickens. I haven't lost it. I lost two. I lost two because I didn't close the gate. I didn't lose them because they broke into that pen. I just didn't close the door. Uh, am I a May baby born in May? No, not at all. Not at all. Uh, Cotham said they lost one. That's part of the game. Losing livestock. Now your whole system change on what you was about to do and accomplish, right? Now you got to figure out. Now I got to plan this whole day to get me some new chickens in before the season come in good. Because the chicken season is coming and they run out of chickens real quick. So you got to jump. You got to put everything on hold to get on to that. Um. Let me see. Grid Free Gear says the chickens are my biggest worry, but I also have livestock guardian dogs to help me with that. OK, uh, Kimberly says or ready to plow the earth and get to plant and it won't stop raining. That's what I'm going through now. Jay says I lost 10 chickens from a skunk. My whole flock. Dang. Hey, uh, Regina from Detroit, Michigan family. You know, we right there with you. So. It's just always something. But I wanted to show people my, my perspective and my point of view. Um, she is sunshine. Hey, she is sunshine. What's up, little sister? I can tell you this. I don't plan on buying no more chickens because, look, why is them sitting out there like that? Because I'm, I'm going home. Well, I can't say that no more. Do you, do you plan to add a greenhouse? I might, I may, I, I'm not even really thinking about that at this very moment, but I might, I may have to, but I might, I don't know. 
but I got to take a bunch of eggs back to Colombia so I can get, get them. I'm going to bring my incubator out here and hook them to solar. So we're going to be solar incubating. That don't, that sound perverted. Um, but we're going to be solar incubating. Okay. Because I can't do nothing. I can't pay attention when I'm in South Carolina incubating no eggs. And I know she ain't got time to do it right now. So I'm going to bring the incubator here. We're going to it, fill it full of these. Um, is Lily in there Freedom Makers? No, she's out of the ground. She's still in South Carolina. So, but she's out of the ground. She's not out here yet because I don't want nothing to happen to her. Rick says, hey, Lynn, lost two turkeys to Bobcats. Mm. Sorry to hear that, brother. Sorry to hear that. Miss Native Cherokee, we getting ready to do a hatch soon, too. Okay, so we all on the same accord. Uh, Griffey Gear says, with the weather changes, the greenhouse is almost necessary every time. That's my next mission, a hoop house. Very true. The, the reason why I'm saying I'm not thinking about a greenhouse right now, y'all, I want one, but I'm not thinking about it at this very moment because I don't know where everything is going permanently. I don't want no more half-assed structures put up. I don't, I really don't want any more half-assed structures. I want a, uh, what is that called? A high tunnel. I want a permanent high tunnel put up. I don't, I don't want to... I don't know exactly where my house is going to be. I do, but things change. So I don't want to do nothing permanent yet. Did you fence your land in yet? Yes, I carry my fence on my hip. Uh, can chicken survive without you when you travel? Absolutely. They don't need me. All they need is a little bit of protection at night. Other than that, my chickens do not need me. I don't feed them like that. You know, um, I don't know what a Sawyer squeeze. What did you mean by that? Um, yes, my mobile fence. It's my Glockweilers. Everybody keep asking me, am I getting a dog? I already got, I got, I, right now. I got about six Glockweilers here, right here in this room. They just quiet. <laughs> you don't want to hear them bark. <laughs> yes, Gina versus Gina. I know you know the hip fence. Yes, my hip fence. Huh? Hit him with the hip fence. Let me. <laughs> Pow! Hit him with the hip fence. Cow panel high tunnel. Those are amazing. Yes, but those are temporary too. I I, I really don't want. I really don't want no temporary structures. I just don't. I'm trying not to. Let me put it to you like this. I already have a lot of junk to clean up off my land. I don't want to keep junking it up. With a bunch of stuff that I know I'm going to throw away. Right here. And I'm going to tell you all this too. Let me tell you something. Um... There is no garbage man here. Okay? When every time you throw something away, there is no garbage man. There is none of that. To get rid of large obstacles and trash, you have to do some driving. You're going to be gone for the day trying to get rid of something because it's a, it's a, a actual trip you have to take to throw stuff that big away. Everything else, I separate. Let me show you something right now. Let me show you something. Here's my trash can. That's my trash can. It's plastic cans and all kind of stuff in there. You Look again. You don't see no paper, do you? You don't see no cardboard. You don't see no paper. All you see, oh, I'm burning my coffee. I knew I smelled something burning. You don't see no paper. This is a this is a, a sanitizer wipe uh, for wiping off tables. That's not paper. That's cloth. You don't see no, all you see is 
metal cans and plastic. So reason for that is because the reason it's not outside is because I separate glass. Let me let me show you. I ain't even gonna get up and show you. I keep all my glasses. Glass get separated from metal, get separated from plastic, get separated from paper. I burn paper. Plastic gets put. Matter of fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what I do with the plastic. Every time I end up going in town. I wrap everything up when I go grocery shopping. I keep all them like shopping bags. I wrap all the plastic in that and I dump it in that plastic recycling thing. That's how I get rid of it. It's easier than going all the way to the dump. Because I'm not in Columbia no more. So it ain't I just don't wait for the garbage man to come and I don't just drive my stuff to the city dump and it's only take me 10, 10 minutes to get there. Everything I feed all of my food that I didn't eat. I feed that to the chickens. I had the other day my my nephew. I brought him out here for the first time, and I I barbecued and I cooked. I hooked it up. We hooked it up, and uh, we had like burgers and baked beans, little side salad and stuff like that. We didn't eat as much as we thought we was, cause we did more talking, and all that food that when I, when he left. I'm stuck here with all this food. I don't have anywhere to put it. That's the other thing I was telling you about. Don't, you cannot waste food out here. Because now you got to go get some more food. You running out. That's, we're going to talk about rationing. Everything is a ration. Everything. Before I, if I got, if I got somebody uh, some fast food or anything. Take the, hey, can I get some extra napkins? You go out to eat, you go to a restaurant. Ma'am, can I have some extra napkins? You know why? That's free, number one. Number two, the old El Wipo. <laughs> hey, everything gets rationed. You can't be wasting no damn food because you ain't, ain't, it take you 30, 40 minutes. Well, I'm going to say about 35 minutes to get to the nearest town to get anything to eat, get groceries. I'm talking about real groceries. Ain't no just run to the Walmart real quick. Ain't no just run to the other big box store, the orange one and the blue one. They ain't even here. So you got to make sure you do everything. I don't leave my land unless I got a whole list. Because this is a mission day. That's the other thing. It's a mission day. I'm going to be gone all day handling all this business. Because once I get to town or drive back to South Carolina, I got to do all this all day while I'm there. Because I can't just keep bouncing back and forth. So if I'm not feeding my chickens the excess food, I am burning the paper, burning the cardboard, separating the metals. I drop the metal off at the recycling plant. When I go back to Columbia, because I don't even know if they even have one here. So let me show you this. I can't make this up, y'all. I don't know if there's a recycling place nowhere by here because all out here is cotton fields. OK. I do stuff like this. This is this is that can of baked beans that my nephew, me and my nephew ate. I just ripped that label off and I put my toiletries in there, toothbrush, toothpaste, shaving cream. I got a mirror down here at the bottom and I just set it up here. The other can that's in that thing, it was on my desk, but I was trying to make room and I had my pencils and my pens and stuff in it. You got to start thinking about how to how to make everything work. You can't just be throwing everything away. It even it even changes you on what you going to eat. When I, when I cook, I don't cook by what I got a taste for. I can't make this up. I cook by how much energy am I going to waste cleaning up what I just cooked to eat? If I cook, cook, cook in my pans and my pots, I'm going to waste water washing those pans and pots. 
If I cook, 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 where am I putting all this food after it's done? Where's the leftovers going? Because I don't got that much space and I got to conserve space. If I cook, 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 you got to think about, okay, now I've got to use all this soap. I got to waste all this water. I got to use all these pans. And you can't throw them in the sink and wait till tomorrow. You can't do like, uh, like us fellas do and just put the lid on the pot, put the whole damn pot in the refrigerator. You can't do it. Not here. Everything has to be done immediately. You get done eating. You put your food away. You wash your pot. You get everything. That, you can't wait till to, nothing waits till tomorrow when you're doing this. Nothing. As a matter of fact, I can I can show you better than I can tell you. I keep trying to show you. Um, Myra, hey, Myra McClain, are you going to replace beehives in the next year or so? Yes. Yes, I am. I can show you better than I can tell you. Here's a storage storage bowl paper plates let me show you something when my nephew was here and he spent the night you see what that is I'm gonna tell you what that is in a Ziploc bag Okay, in a Ziploc bag. This is I'm trying to I'm trying to show my nephew a good time because he here and this is his first time on the land. So I'm trying to go out and go big for him, right? I ended up making two. I, I told him I was gonna make us some some pancakes like when he was a kid and everything, right? So I made some pancake batter and I went made way too much, way too much in the first place. But then the part that made it worse, not only did I make too much, but he had to go because his job called. And he was like, uh, I ain't going to be able to stay a couple more days because his job called right while we were sitting there talking and asked him, could he come back? Could he come in? And I said, man, go make your money. So I'm sitting here stuck with a quart of pancake batter. What you going to do with it? So I put it in this refrigerator and... Hope it stay good, and I don't eat pancakes like that, so I don't know. I probably take it. My, nobody in my family do, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. But I wasn't about to waste it, so I put it in a Ziploc bag out of this big white bowl, poured it in a Ziploc bag, put it in the refrigerator, and just see what I'm gonna do next. Everything is a calculated step. Absolutely everything I do everything sorry for rambling on y'all i just wanted to show y'all show y'all around my place you know but this is going to be here permanently the only thing that's going to end up changing in the next month or two is the wood stove is going to come out and go back in storage and that's where the uh the air conditioning unit is going to go because it's about to get hot they make pancakes and every few days give to the chickens. That's a great idea, too. That's a great idea. Thank you for that. I, I may have to do that. That's an excellent idea. Matter of fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, Let me see. Sheila says, worst case, cook pancakes for the chickens. Yep, everybody's saying that. Thank you, everybody, for that great idea. That's what I'm going to end up doing. I just, I love pancakes. I just don't. Gotta have my mouth fixed for him though. You know, that ain't something you just go to, mm, I'm about to get some flapjacks. That's just, it's not me. So, yeah. Ms. Native Cherokee, I found a local farm that has milking cows. We are doing cow shares to get fresh milk, going to make cheese, butter, sour cream. I don't have the time to do none of that. I'm not gonna lie to you. Good luck with that. That's the other thing. You have to ration your time and you got to put your time, your time, even me doing this live when I'm in South Carolina, I'm on live for hours here. Now I'm like, I got to start batting down the hatches. It's dark outside. It's raining and I got stuff to do in the morning. 
What is your filtration system, Marvin? Um, I just showed everybody I boil my water and then I run it through a Berkey system. And that's where I get all my water from. For my rainwater. Any other questions before we get out of here? I don't want I don't want to be on too much longer. It's roasting in this boy. But I, I don't want to turn that fire down. Because it's drying everything up. All this humidity. Somebody asked me about my humidifier. When you run your dehumidifier. Because your dehumidifier makes water too. But the dehumidifier uses uh, 500 watts to run. And it's been raining for three days. I don't want to be here longer. But I got to tell you this. Everything you plug up into your solar power generator. If you have one. You got to think about it. Thank you Rio's Family Garden. Um, I'm trying to think what I was running uh, the other day. Oh, I thought it was a I thought it was a wise idea to hook up an electric hot plate so I could just hurry up, cook real fast because I had stuff to do. A hot plate uses 1,300 watts. So, I thought I'm just I don't feel like making no cowboy coffee. I want some 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 drip coffee. I plug my coffee machine up. What do you think about the Berkey lawsuit? I don't think anything about it. That's none of my business. I don't care about what they say about Berkey. It works. I don't care about what other. I don't care about what they say. I know what works. I don't, I'm not affiliated with Berkey. I don't have anything to do with Berkey water filter whatsoever. I'm not part of the company. I'm not a spokesman. I'm not a sponsor, nothing. But I swear by them. And the only people that are saying the stuff that they're saying is other companies that want they spot. That's how it always happened, man. That's how it always happened. I'm going to tell you something else, too, just for the people real quick. Um, Real quick. Um, it's one dude that came out and said he lied because listen you go check it yourself about all of them Berkey dudes that was coming on saying Berkey lawsuit Berkey fake Berkey okay okay guess what Berkey was paying people too Berkey was paying people to say that stuff too and it's one dude, one guy, I'm not going to name him, came out and told the truth. Evidently, he ain't get his check. Go do your own research right here on YouTube. You'll find him. You're going to find him. I think his video is called The Truth About Berkey, something like that. You'll see. Berkey ain't sponsoring nobody. So he telling the whole truth. First, he was, oh, yeah, this, that, and other thing. Change his tune real quick when he ain't see them zeros on the end of that check. Nobody can't tell me they don't work the way that water tastes when you run it through it. So I don't care what what they talking about. Uh, can you give me uh Christy, can you give me a tip on solar generator that all the parts come with it for about a thousand dollars? That's that's a toughie. No, I can't. I I really I can't. Because that's too vast. And when you say all of the parts, I'm, I'm thinking you mean solar cables, solar panels. You want a whole package deal. Just go to EcoFlow. That's the only thing I can say. Because that's the only one I know and I trust. And it ain't because I'm sponsored. You Out of all the generators I got, y'all know this. Out of all the generators I have. Look what's running my... This is what I'm really trusting with my dog on survival. And y'all ain't seen no videos on this here. This is what I'm trusting with my survival. So, here's another thing. That drip coffee, a drip coffee maker take 1,300 watts. Now, you got to start thinking about your solar power uh, hey, are you going to do wind power as well? No. As if you are doing uh, solar power, 
every watt that you use, you better be thinking about it. How important is it? For instance, I'm burning the wood stove. I don't got to use my generators to use nothing electric to cook with. I can be cooking right on top of that doggone wood stove. Simple. If I need to boil water, when I make coffee, I do it on top of that wood stove. If I can't use my wood stove, then I turn to my small propane grill top or my Mr. Buddy flex with the stove on it. So I don't use that much fuel. Every drop of fuel that you use, you pay for it. Every drop of gasoline from running your gas generators. If the sun ain't out and yo like it ain't been no sun here in about three days, ain't no solar coming in. What are you going to do? You got to think about it. So let me show you something right now. Usually all day long, I charges up all of my lights. Right now, I'm wasting them for this video. This light is dead. It's dead. It's only one. It's going to cut off in a second. It cut off on me before because the battery did. And I don't want to mess it up. So what I'm doing now, I'm not charging that light. I'm just going to, I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to be without it. And once all this other, these other electronic lights go out, they're just out. Then I got to start using candles. Because you got to conserve your power. Everything, man. You can't just plug everything up into your solar. Or plug everything up in, uh, plug everything up into your gas generator. Gas generators take gasoline. Where am I getting gas at? For me to go get gasoline, if I don't siphon it out of my truck. Or use my stash that I got at my fueling station. I got to go in town. I got to drive. When I go drive to go get gasoline, I'm wasting gas in my own truck to get me there and back just to get gasoline to go in there. I'd rather not use it. I'd rather just not use it. If I can get away without using propane, gasoline, kerosene, I that's what I do. Or, or solar. I try to do everything without using anything first. Uh, have you ever thought about buying? I don't even know what that is. Oh, biogas, no. Vision says you have to, facts, you have to think about it long to take, how long is going to take to recharge everything? Absolutely. If you got, if you got a slow charging generator, there was, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put this one company on blast. I'm not going to say their name, but this one company sent me, this one solar power generator company sent me a solar power generator that they wanted me to show. But once I did the test, I was like, that's not not approved. That's not lead approved because this generator only brings in. It's a thousand watt generator. No, I'm sorry. Two thousand watt generator. Listen to me. It's a two thousand watt hour generator it only charges at 200 watts you do the math how long is it going to take you to charge a 2000 watt hour generator with only 200 watts of input that's plugged into the wall that's not solar you'll be here forever just in an emergency ah no uh -uh. i said no that no, I'm sorry. Yeah, vision denied. No, absolutely not. That's insane. This is 2024. If you would have pulled this off four or five years ago, I'd have been like, yeah, this is the bomb. Are you crazy? So sent that back. I don't want to have nothing to do with this one. You trying to you trying to sell my you trying to sell me and have me tell my people about technology that's five years old. That's insane. Oh, oh. Let's not talk about the price of the generator. You could get some EcoFlow equipment. I was like, no, that's insane what you're trying to do. Why did you send me this? You didn't tell me this stuff. So um, everything you need, uh, you got to think about it. Every piece of power, everything, 
everything. It's like your land is kind of like your body. If you go sweat, you got to replace your sweat and your electrolytes with electrolytes. Everything you do, you have to think about. You can't just uh, run all of your stuff out and just be sitting out here like a bum on the tracks. You have to constantly think about, do I have enough ammunition? Do I have enough this? Do I have enough food? Do I have enough water? I'm always thinking about water. I can find food. It's a lot of wildlife here. A lot. A lot. I'm not worried about food. Water. You never stop thinking about water. Because you use water for everything. You need water to sanitize, to wash, to bathe, to eat, to drink. Everything you need has to deal with water. Uh, Gina versus Gina said never enough of any of those things. So stay collecting. Amen to that. Amen. Shaggy said, I love my my lead approved Bourgeois V freezer in my truck. In my truck right now. Matter of fact, I got one in my truck, one in my RV and one in my kitchen tent out back. So that's that. I ain't going to hold y'all no longer, okay? Thank you guys for coming in. I really do appreciate y'all coming in. And on, on my tiny house tent, this is my uh, tiny tent home. Everybody always talk about tiny home. How about tiny tent home? Led's tiny tent home. Pimp my tent. Come get a good look at my tents. <laughs> Do you think several, that's a good question. Do you think several solar generators chained together equaling 5,000 watts is similar to having a 1,500 watt unit? Um, No, it's not. Hold on. If power were to go out in the summer, how do you stay cool without using any of your electricity? That's a good question. Like this. Like I did when I was a kid and I didn't have air conditioning. Air conditioning is great. But air conditioning is not necessary. We did without it for thousands of years. Just in recent times have we had air conditioning. I know in my lifetime, I never even sat in air conditioning until I was almost grown. The only time we really had air conditioning at when I was a kid was when your my dad and my mom used to take us to the movie theater. Or you go to the mall or the shopping center. We in the house like this. Look, you see, this is how comfortable you be. You grab anything. Hit it like that. This was normal. See how this looked dumb to people now and it looked funny to you now. This was normal. You grab anything, a sock, a rag. Oh, here you go. Here go my hat. I'm not worried about trying to stay cool. It's, I mean, trying, yes, yeah, it's the heat that you got to worry about. The heat takes a little bit more. The cool, when it comes to getting cool, you can sit in some water and stay cool. When it's, when you trying to, Warm up, you have to burn energy to stay warm. You get what I'm saying? Let, let, me, let me throw this at you. To stay warm, to warm your body, to warm your core, you have to burn some type of energy to stay warm. To stay cool, you can sit right down in a tub of water and it'll cool you off cool your whole core that's a whole medical uh situation right there usually when we have somebody uh heat stroke or something put their asses in some water that's the first thing we did 
Okay? So, that's... I'm not worried about getting heated up at all. Air conditions is great. Yeah, I got little 12 volt fans, but they, they said with no electricity, with no electricity, get in some shade, grab you a little hand fan, grab you a piece of cardboard, take your clothes off, keep your footies on, and just make a dance out of it. You know, right. Lay in the creek. I got streams all around here. OK, so I, I ain't going to keep y'all. I just really wanted to chop it up with y'all and just kind of show y'all my perspective of things and what I'm doing. Another piece to our puzzle. OK, with that being said, everybody have a wonderful night. And I'm sorry for keeping y'all. Thank you for the great questions. The great questions. All right. Uh-oh, another one. Any, any advice for older people that have breathing issues in the heat with no electricity? Yes. Go consult a physician, a licensed, certified physician. Or what they say, if this is a medical emergency, please hang up the phone and call 911. I'm not qualified for that. <laughs> okay. Everybody have a wonderful night. All right. Thank you. Guava. Lead Farmer 73. I love you. And I'm out. Peace.